What's up guys, it's Kale here and it is a beautiful day here in Sydney. Today I thought I'd do a different style of video, one where we just talk about looking after your surf gear. Surfing is one of those sports that can be expensive if you don't look after your stuff. And after getting insanely barreled for the last couple of days, I've actually wound up with a damaged board, just a small little hole that if left untreated could end up being quite expensive and quite a significant issue to deal with down the line. So what I'm going to do is show you how to fix it using some simple $7 solar res and then we're also going to go into how to look after some other gear as well. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel. This is How to Rip's Lesson of the Week. And make sure you join me on Instagram and YouTube as well, at Kale's Broccoli. Let's get into it. These are the days that I live for. No one around, beautiful weather, it's offshore, and there's tubes. This particular morning was super special with lots of tubes on offer, but on one wave, I actually damaged my board. is always a little bit tricky on your own. The main consideration that I personally have is, is this board, is this ding worth paying $70 to $100 to go get fixed professionally, or is it something small that I can actually handle myself? Today, it falls under the category of being small and probably self-fixable. I've uh, got this solar rare stuff. I don't know if it's any, a particular brand is better than any other one but basically it's an instant sort of sun cure. So the moment that I take this out of this little container here, the resin inside, the epoxy resin, is actually going to harden very quickly. And that's why I'm doing currently this in the light, but what I'm gonna do is actually apply this in the shade and then bring this out into the light so that it hardens up immediately. Now I want to talk about the fact that this is epoxy resin. So this is an EPS resin which matches my EPS board. You can also get other resins that suit a polyurethane board like my other twin fin there. So this is an EPS and epoxy resin that's going to suit this board right here. I've also left this board out in the sun so that if any water actually made its way into the ding, hopefully it evaporates as much as possible before I actually seal the hole. The main thing that I'm looking for, and I'm not gonna open this until I'm very ready. <laughs> the main thing that I'm looking for is, is some way to actually get a bit of a hook with the resin. Um, because putting resin, if I just put it on top of the deck here, the smooth deck, chances are that it's probably just gonna strip off at some point. Now, obviously with the fractured EPS fiberglass here, there is a little bit of uh, hook and space 
for the resin to actually set into, but I can't see a lot of grip happening. So what I'm gonna do is actually, um, without making the ding too much worse, I'm actually gonna flare up the fiberglass just a touch so that I can actually seep this resin inside so that it actually has a grip inside the board. The key here is to not do anything too drastic. <laughs> Um, this thing is, is quite minor and I could probably leave it how it is. However, I think eventually water is going to seep through and then it, uh, essentially poison the rest of the board. That's what the salt water will do. And the board will get heavy and it's not going to perform how I want it to. So I'm happy with the amount of grip that that's going to get. Um, as you can see. And now I'm just going to put it on. Now you notice that I'm actually trying to smoothen out the resin. I've used a little bit too much, so I'll scrape that off. Having a little paddle pop stick uh, is super handy in this moment here. Uh, and what I'm trying to do is just flatten it out and make sure that we've got that hook feature happening where the resin is actually going into the board and hopefully getting a good grip so that when we do put it in the sun, we do get a nice, dry, solid repair job. Okay, I'm pretty happy with that. Now that I'm happy with where the resin is sitting and what's going on here in general, it looks pretty clean. It looks like it's gonna have that hook. I'm gonna go and put it back in the sun. And importantly, it's only gonna take around five to 10 minutes to actually cure. One of the trickiest repair jobs there is to do is anything to do with fins and fin plugs. Fins tend to be quite delicate and they, they tend to be quite unforgiving. So if you do damage your fins, if you rip one out and out comes the fin box, don't try and just solder res it back in. The best thing you can do is take it to an expert, replace the whole system. And remember, not every ding needs to be fixed. The only dings that need to be fixed are ones where it actually breaks open the fiberglass and then makes the inside of the board vulnerable and exposed to salt water and air that's going to essentially oxidize. I don't even know if that's the correct term for it, but it's going to compromise the quality of the material. And then that will subsequently compromise the quality of the performance possible on that surfboard. Be all right. I know someday we could finally be friends. With our eyes go falling, falling in love again. And I feel now it is time to let you go without hesitation. Let's talk about putting your board on roof racks. Roof racks can be super helpful when you're carrying lots of boards or you've got people in the car with you. The key though is to keep the board flat and make sure the fins are obviously not going to scrape the car. When it comes to tying down the board, use a strap that has a flat buckle. 
any sort of ridges or large shapes in the buckle can damage the board. So you want to make sure it's nice and flush against the board. Tie it down and then close the ropes inside the car door or tie them up. For extra safety, you can put your board in a board cover before putting them on the racks. One of them. I know someday we could finally be friends with our so this board looks like it's done. It's only been in the sun for probably seven minutes, I think. So I'm gonna chuck it in the car. And speaking of which, let's talk about storing your boards the best way. Storing your boards in the car means exposing them to a lack of airflow and sometimes some intense heat. So it's important to number one, protect your seats with something like this old board cover and also to try and get shaded spots for the boards. If I can see that they're in the shade, they're generally pretty okay. To avoid getting wax in different places, I'll make sure that the bottom of both boards always face each other. Always store your leg rope straight and not in a wrap position, otherwise you'll end up finding that it gets caught around your legs whilst you're surfing. Well, I hope that helped you out, guys. Just a quick video to show you how to get the most out of your surf gear. Like I said earlier, it can be an expensive sport and making sure that our gear lasts a long time not only saves you money, but also protects those special boards that we get our hands on that we want to keep in excellent condition. And make sure you check out all the links in the bio below to get your hands on some of our favorite gear and be sure to join me on Instagram and YouTube at Kale's Broccoli and make sure while you're here you subscribe hit the notification button so you don't miss any important videos. Hit the like button and comment below and let us know what else you wanna see. I'm gonna chill today, the sun's out obviously. I think I'm gonna have to get back in the water. I'm tube hungry this week, so I really wanna get back out there. Thanks so much for tuning in. Really appreciate you guys being here. Thanks so much for helping us hit 50,000 subscribers. What? It's absolutely unreal. Thanks guys, tuning out, see you later. I don't know what I need.